If you don't have Greek yogurt, you can use sour cream. Are you gonna taste the sour cream or the yogurt in the recipe? You won't taste it. <laughs> can you tell I get a lot of questions about this recipe? Welcome back to another episode of Basic Baking on the Scram Line. I'm Nick and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make my vanilla cupcakes. So what I love about this cupcake recipe, first of all, there's lots of things I love, but it's so versatile. You can do so many different things to it, color it, flavor it, add berries to it. Like there's so many things you can do with it. And I'm going to take you through all of that stuff in a second. But if you're looking for a cupcake recipe that is really, really moist, really, really delicious and super easy to make, this is the recipe for you. Now, just a note, most other cupcake recipes are a little bit more like fluffier than my recipe. And it's not that my recipe isn't fluffy, but it's a little bit denser than most other cupcake recipes. Now, there's a reason for that, and I'm gonna take you through it in a second because it's a question I get all the time and I'm super excited to answer it. But before we get into this actual recipe, there's a couple things you need to prepare. When you're making cakes, it's really important if the recipe has butter to make sure that your butter is at room temperature. Now, if it's cold where you are, obviously your butter is gonna be quite stiff. And some people or most people keep their butter in the fridge. I don't because I go through so much butter by the time it goes off, I've used it already. If you keep your butter in the fridge, you wanna make sure that it's nice and, well, it's at room temperature. And the easiest way I've found to do that is by microwaving it. So I pop it in a microwave safe bowl, I microwave it for 10 seconds at a time, and then I flip it over each time until it's nice and soft. So obviously you've seen what it looks like when it's not soft, but here's what it looks like when it is soft and ready to be used. So if you can put your finger in it and it looks like this, then it's ready. So that's the first thing you wanna do. A general rule of thumb with cake recipes is to actually use room temperature ingredients as well. So something like milk, for example, you wanna make sure that that isn't just straight out of the fridge. Most of us keep our milk in the fridge, so microwave it for 20 or 30 seconds just to kind of bring it to room temperature. Now that we have that out of the way, we're ready to begin our recipe. So let's begin with the dry ingredients. I've got some all-purpose flour. We're gonna pop that into our mixing bowl along with some sugar. So I'm using caster sugar. In America, you might know that as super fine sugar. You can use granulated sugar and that's what the recipe says, but I actually use caster sugar because I find you get a bit of a finer crumb with that. Again, it doesn't really matter as long as I mean it's sugar. The next thing we're gonna add is the baking powder. So this is the rising agent that helps our cupcakes rise, or one of them, because the other thing is the eggs. Then we're gonna add our salt, and that's our dry ingredient. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make these using a hand mixer. You can use a stand mixer if you prefer, just fit it with a paddle attachment. You wanna mix these ingredients together. Now, some people actually sift their dry ingredients together, and that's completely fine. Some people think that that helps aerate the mixture. I don't find that's the case, so I don't really bother sifting my ingredients together. I find even just mixing them with the hand mixer on low speed helps aerate the mixture anyway, so that's how I do it. Once you have all of your dry ingredients combined, we're gonna add our softened butter. Now, you may be wondering, and a lot of people ask me this question, hey Nick, why don't you cream your butter and sugar together? So a lot of recipes actually do that method. It's called the creamy method, where you add your butter and sugar into a large mixing bowl, mix it together until it's nice and creamy and pale. That's a way to get air into your mixture, and it's really, really great. But I actually use the reverse creamy method, which is a different method you just add your butter to all of your dry ingredients and mix it until it reaches a crumbly sand-like texture. Now, I do this for a couple reasons. I find it's really quick and it's much, much quicker than the creamy method, but also it results in, and again, this is my opinion and some people will disagree with this, 
but in a much more moist cupcake. I find that the cream method can often give your cupcakes a much fluffier texture than my vanilla cupcake recipe, but it also dries out easier. And this way it doesn't really dry out as much. So that's the reason why I do the reverse creamy method. So once that's mixed and it looks like a crumbly sand-like texture, you want to start adding your wet ingredients. So at room temperature, eggs, add those in there. And for those wondering, I use really fresh eggs. That's why they're so bright. Then you wanna add your milk, your oil, then you're going to add some Greek yogurt. I get a lot of questions about this as well. Greek yogurt is in this recipe because it also adds moisture. Can you leave it out? You can. If you don't have Greek yogurt, you can use sour cream. Are you gonna taste the sour cream or the yogurt in the recipe? You won't taste it. <laughs> can you tell I get a lot of questions about this recipe? We're gonna be adding some vanilla extract in here as well. You can use vanilla bean extract. You can use food flavorings. You can also color your batters using food gels or liquid food colorings. I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit later. Now on low speed, we're gonna mix all of this together until our butter is nice and well combined. Once you can see no dry ingredients showing, you wanna stop mixing because it's really important with cake and cupcake butters not to overmix. If you overmix, it results in a cupcake that's not as delicate. So when you're eating it, it feels a little bit chewier, which isn't nice but it can also cause your cupcake liners to come away from your cupcake as it shrinks when it cools down. So keep that in mind. My general rule of thumb is, as soon as you can see no dry ingredients showing, you want to stop mixing. So at this point, I'm going to scrape down the bowl really, really well, because some of those dry ingredients don't usually get mixed from the bottom or the sides of the bowl, even if you're using a stand mixer or a hand mixer. Scrape down the bowl always, and then you're gonna mix for a final 20 seconds, and then your butter's done. Super duper easy. Now, back when I used to work in a bakery, we used a ice cream scoop to actually scoop our butter from our bowl into our cupcake liners. And the reason we did this is because it is much, much quicker than most other methods. Some people actually pipe their butters or use spoons, and that's completely fine but I just find this method is much quicker, but it also helps ensure that all of your cupcake liners are filled exactly the same. And if you want more information on the cupcake scoop sizes that I use, you can head over to my website, thescranline.com. In the tools and equipment section of my website, I've got all of the tools and equipment that I use in my videos, brands, sizes, measurements, it's all there, so go check it out. So I've got two cupcake trays with 12 cavities in each one because this recipe makes 20 cupcakes. So you wanna line it with some cupcake liners. We're going to scoop the butter into our cupcake liners. Once you've got them all filled, we're gonna pop these in the oven. So I bake my cupcakes on 140 degrees Celsius or 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. So that's longer than most other recipes. And the reason I do that is because, especially with something like vanilla cupcakes where it's white, or if you color your vanilla batter, you don't get colorization if you bake them on a lower temperature for a little bit longer. The cupcake comes out a little bit denser and not as fluffy as other recipes, but it's still fluffy. It doesn't dry out the cupcake either if you bake for longer on a lower temperature. So if you're wondering that, it definitely doesn't do that. But the most important thing is that it actually results in a nice flat top. So all of those beautiful, perfect looking cupcakes, that's because they were baked on a low temperature. Once your cupcakes are baked and looking absolutely beautiful, you're going to let these cool down in your cupcake trays for about five minutes before you take them out and pop them on a cooling rack to cool down completely at room temperature. Popping them in the fridge to cool down is a big no-no because it will cause them to shrink. So let them cool at room temperature and then you are ready to frost them. There's like loads of ways to frost these cupcakes, but before we get into that, I just wanna talk a little bit about how to color and flavor your cupcake butter. Generally, when I'm coloring my cupcake or cake butter, I use 
food gel coloring. So the reason I do that is because you don't really need to use that much to get a nice bright color. So you can use liquid food dyes, that's completely fine but I generally use the gels more than the liquid ones. Now, if you're wondering which brand I use, I use Chef Master or Americolor or Queen Fine Food brand food gels and liquid food colorings. Um, if you're wanting to color your batter, you can use artificial flavoring. That's completely fine. I know some people don't like it. I'm not against it. Or you can even mix through berries in your cupcake batter. Now, generally when you add berries to your cupcake batter, you need to bake them a little bit longer because you're adding moisture into your batter and as your cupcakes bake, they're soaking in that moisture so they need a little bit longer to bake. So generally, add an extra 10 minutes if you're adding berries to your cupcake batter. I use frozen or fresh, it doesn't really matter. These cupcakes are perfectly paired with my buttercream frosting. So I've got a couple of different types of buttercream frosting. Swiss meringue, delicious if you want something that's not too sweet and smooth. I've got American buttercream frosting, which is a classic, easy to make buttercream frosting. I've got chocolate ganache frostings, which are great for these cupcakes as well. I have a lot of frosting recipes. If you want to learn how to make those frosting recipes, click up there. I've got a playlist of all of my frosting recipes that are really easy to make. Add some sprinkles, a nice maraschino cherry on top, and those are my beautiful vanilla cupcakes. They are so easy to make, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I didn't bombard you with too much information but I wanted to make sure that I answered all of the questions that you guys have been asking over the years since the first time I made these cupcakes about six years ago on this channel. So hopefully that answers your questions, but if you have questions, you can always ask them in the comments down below. I will answer them. If you have any other questions or suggestions, or you just wanna say hello, leave a comment down below, I'd love to hear from you. If you wanna grab this recipe, I've left a link in the box down below for you guys to click on. Click on that, it'll take you to the recipe, make them. If you do make them, I'd love to see your wonderful creations over on social media. Tag me on Instagram or Facebook. This recipe is so versatile, you can pretty much use it to create any type of cake cupcake that you like. I'm actually gonna be making a video on how to make my vanilla cake as well. So if you're wondering if you can use this recipe for cakes, you can, but just wait for that recipe, it's coming. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around to the end. I'll see you all on the next episode of The Scram Line.